what was the original purpose of Tech Titans? Because it's still relevant and central to the core of what our mission is. So we started back in 1997 with the Third Friday Tech Launch, which I imagine Mark, you might remember that. Um, Third Friday Tech Launch has been running ever since 1997, and this Friday will be at Preston Wood Country Club with Betty Manetta, the CEO of Argent Associates, one of the long tenured, longest tenured women CEOs of technology in the country, uh, who has also joined our board. She's great. If you have a chance to go see her, I would recommend you do it. Every third Friday of the month, Tech Industry Luncheon Series is presenting a, a, a speaker like Betty. Uh, in the past, we've had Chris Prabhu, the CTO of at and who's now our new chairman this year, uh, the head of the FBI, uh, the head of technology for Salesforce. I mean, it's those kind of speakers. So you're talking to 100 plus people in the room. Great place for market visibility. You can meet a lot of people at one time, get your business cards out. That's a good place to get started. Um, so the other areas we have that I'm going to get into in a little more detail now uh, are special interest forums. One of the things we've been looking at in 2014 is what other offerings can we make that are more specific and relevant to different niche sectors of the regional economy that would be a good fit for us. But of course we do have fun and every spring we have a golf tournament, it will sell out. If you're interested in playing golf, I personally don't have time anymore, but uh, it sells out and it's also a great way to catch people that to get a longer time. It's not, I got 20 minutes, what do you want? You know, it's a much more relaxed atmosphere, it starts at noon, dinner after, that kind of thing. So plenty of different opportunities. I'm going to go into more detail on the forums as we get there and I'm going to explain kind of how that came about. But I don't want to miss what I call the big three. Um, you know, we all want business and we all work to get business and that's something we, you know, our companies expect us to do. But beyond that, if you look at the North Texas economy and you look at technology, finance, energy, uh, healthcare, the major sectors of our economy are dependent upon talent. Uh, the one thing that resonates with every company and the reason you're seeing Toyota and State Farm and Liberty Mutual and all these companies move in here is because they can find the talent they need to be able to run their companies. And especially in the technology sector, this is where the whole STEM education arena comes into play. Uh, area school districts and universities and colleges are all involved in Tech Titan. So, we started back in 2005 with a Lego Mindstorm Robotics program in three schools. And then we uh, had the Richardson Schools and Plano Schools involved. And now we have STEMfire.com. STEMfire is a web portal where you can go on and volunteer to go speak to a class. And there are now 13 different school districts that are a part of STEMfire where teachers are on there. There's over 200 teachers and over 200 tech professionals. We need 500. so. Sign up. You're not committing to a long-term deal. It's a, uh, a web-based, geographic, nearby, can you stop by and talk, especially fourth through sixth grade, where you get them interested in math and science. I had one of my favorites, uh, one of our guys went to a fifth grade class. He said his son had managed to break an iPad. So he took the broken iPad and another iPad to the fifth grade class and said, you guys know what this is? And of course, any of you that have kids, know that yes I know what the iPad is when we got my then eight and five year old niece and nephew their iPad refurbished for Christmas the uh, blockhead photo of Uncle Drew was already saved as her screensaver within about three minutes and he was downloading Angry Birds and there's no instruction required it is off and running well everybody yeah yeah we know what this is he goes well do you know what makes it work they all look at him and then he pulls out the other iPad and takes a hammer to it and the kids are all going, whoa. <laughs> and it's it's really the guy in Wiley has done the greatest job with it. The superintendent of Wiley actually produced a video with this young guy, real precocious kid. He's like, you know, we got rock stars coming to our school today. They're engineers. It's not the trying to drive trains, that's really cool too. But like these guys, and it's two guys from Raytheon, it's like we make stuff that goes up to the space station and show the rocket taking off and then they come back to the kid and his eyes are like this. And then the TI guys come on and say, we make your cell phone work in video games. You know, and they're like, video games? So it's really 
just, hey, you know, if you want to do this later, you need to take these classes now. And we found, we still do robotics. We have people that judge contests. Amy just judged a uh, science fair last week. Sometimes they take novices. It's, it works too. So. <laughs> and other folks in your, in, you know, seriously, get other folks in your companies involved as well. So. Yeah, and uh, it, it doesn't take a lot, but it, it's that moment that says, wow, that's really cool. I want to do this. And it gets them going. And think about it. Where is your talent coming from 5, 10, 15 years from now? Because if you look around DFW right now at tech unemployment and the folks in the placement and staffing and recruiting arenas can tell you it's, it's tight. Um, I'm going to skip over innovation for a second and go on to advocacy and branding. Um, one of the challenges in North Texas, and now I can speak to the folks that do investment because they'll know this one well. Uh, we had a large VC presence here in the late 90s, and then telecom crashed in 2001, and the VC firms ran back to the coast and have not been seen since. Uh, mostly angel investors, banks are playing in some areas, but North Texas doesn't look like Silicon Valley. Austin looks like Silicon Valley. People think Austin is the capital of technology in Texas. DFW has more jobs in Austin and Houston put together. but. We tend to be spin-outs or acquisitions through large corporations. We tended and started in the telecom network and switching equipment space, which is not your sexiest dot-com startup. Um, so one of the challenges we've had is to promote the North Texas area as a tech center, and with that, to go through our legislative process to encourage laws that make it a great place to do business in tech. We've been really successful at that. Um, if you look at all the way back to the Emerging Tech Fund back in 06 that was put in place to replace some of that investment capital we weren't seeing, that was us. If you look at the R&D tax credit that got back into the program in 2013, we were on that. If you look at House Bill 5 that eliminated the need to get Algebra 2 to graduate high school, we didn't do so well on that one. But we're down there all the time. Uh, the last session, there were a lot of uh, sales tax abatements for network communications equipment and data centers. I've lost track. I think the last count I had was about 130 data centers, Matt, or anybody might know about how many in DFW. The last I heard, we were 25% of the data centers were right here in Richardson. And in well, Richardson alone is a million square feet. And it's only 28 square miles. And it's going up another 600. But uh, if you look at North Texas, and we're one of the top five internet traffic markets in the country, you've got us, you've got Northern Virginia, D.C. area, you've got New York, Chicago, and Northern California. Where do you want to build your data center? If you look at taxes, you look at talent, you look at central location, you look at weather, you look at business-friendly environment, those are all the things that are causing this explosion that's really the biggest thing since the telecom days of the 90s in terms of the amount of business coming in here. And a lot of it is because we've been successful at creating a strong business-friendly environment in the state. So if you're interested in those areas, we work on that. But as I was saying, the other piece of that is getting the word out about this so that other areas, not only locally, but nationally and internationally, find out about North Texas. And this is one of the places where we've had another big success in the last few years with Mike Skelton, who's our VP of International Business Development. Uh, Mike has run companies overseas and out in California. His function is to try and help our companies go global and help global companies move in here. And especially in the small to mid-sized market, because that's where, you know, you're not a major corporation that's going out and hiring Accenture or Deloitte to come in and set you up in the U.S. So if you're also a supplier that can help with HR rules, legal, uh, finance, any of real estate, any of those things that a small to mid-sized foreign company moving into North Texas would need, Mike has what he calls his concierge team, where he has several members of Tech Titans that can help these companies assimilate into North Texas. And Mark specifically, I just came from a meeting with the U.S. India Chamber and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in April the 20th or 21st. There'll be a day-long program uh, targeted at small to medium-sized businesses doing technology services with Indian development and or companies and startups. So that might be something a lot of you are interested in. I'll get you more information as I get it. I frankly, 
I'm waiting for Neil to send me the updated email on Friday, so if you're interested in that, catch me afterwards and I'll get it to you. Um, that's one of the other things we've been doing a lot of is collaborating with other groups in North Texas to try and build this. Same thing with STEM. You find a lot of different initiatives going on with STEM, different groups doing things. That's why we built STEMfire, because it needed one central web portal where people could go. And now Mike's working on an international business development calendar that would help uh, other international chambers and groups host a business calendar for North Texas. There's a lot of things you can find about cultural events online. There's not so much about all these different international groups and what their business opportunities are. So we're working on that. Then we get to have fun. Uh, who here has been to the Tech Titans Awards Gala? Matt? Mark? Uh, you are invited, along with about 900 of your closest friends, to dinner and drinks and entertainment and just a whole lot of fun and awards program on August 21st. I'm not sure it'll be the third Friday in August this year, as it has been for the past 15 years. Um, Tech Titans Awards Gala was originated 15, now it's going on 16 years ago, to help promote this North Texas region. And so, we have awards for innovation, for CIOs, CEOs, there's a various number of categories that, that you can nominate yourselves or client for. The Dallas Business Journal is a co-sponsor of this event, has been for the whole time, and they produce a special pull-out section just on Tech Titans. Uh, we have been at the Intercontinental, the Anatole, and there's only a few hotels big enough to hold this thing now. We have entertainment uh, during dinner, so this year it was the science guy from Jimmy Fallon. Uh, a couple of years ago it was uh, Charlie Vogt at Gen Band who said, we've got to get these guys that are uh, they're, uh, juggling chainsaws. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> They were hilarious. It's the guy on the progressive uh, insurance commercial, you know. And these guys come out and they're balancing on rolling boards and juggling stuff. And, I mean, they were just awesome. And then, of course, at the end, they came out doing the Blue Danube and juggling three chainsaws to, you know, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and then my chairman at the time, who's about 6'5", borrowed one of the pink, pink tutus that they were wearing and came out with his tux and a pink tutu. Uh, but it's really, it's a great time, it's a lot of fun. Nominate yourselves and your clients because if you are a finalist, you're going to get, they're going to get written up in the Dallas Business Journal. Excellent exposure. The Fast Tech Growth Companies are announced there. It's the biggest tech event in North Texas of the year. So if you want to be there, it's also a great place to get involved with us because that's such a big event. Um, like I said, the CEO of Jim Van Charlie Boat was the chairman of it. Doug Moore who runs for Jitsu has run it. Uh, Barbara Baffer is the CMO for Ericsson has run it. Uh, and there are subcommittees that have CEOs on it. And it's ramping up right now. In fact, I think nominations open this Friday. So uh, get on that one and it's a great time. You'll enjoy it. So I'm going to back up a little. Let me skip back to innovation because that was one of the areas that really prompted the changes in Tech Titans within the last year. Uh, Innovation uh, team was originally created to support an increased amount of university research in North Texas and then help our entrepreneurs, investors uh, commercialize that research and create new companies, new jobs, etc. Uh, SMU, North Texas, UT Dallas, UT Arlington, AM and Commerce, they're, they're all Tech Titans members. And we're thrilled to have that they're an important com component of the continuing pipeline of new development in North Texas. Um, over the years, we've had some different programs that we created around the Tech Titans Innovation Group related to you know, investor opportunities or different programs that had sub, uh, subgroups or what we call special interest groups. So if you go back to 2000, how many remember Walmart RFID? Uh, big program in the early 2000s. Nanotechnology in 2004, Cloud Solutions in 2008, 2009. Um, so we started creating these special interest groups. But at the end of 2013, we're coming into our 20th year 
and we do this and this is something that you can participate in everything i'm talking about is run and designed by you telling us this is what we as the members want you as the organization to be doing so we're bottom up so you can participate on the committees and teams that run these areas uh, in fact that we have a succession program where you become one of the leaders of that group we call it a tri-chair system you serve three years eventually you're running that initiative and you help drive the direction of the group and you can get to the board of directors that way you don't have to be a fortune 100 company to be on the board at tech titans i've got the board list there's about 40 people on it you'll see it um, so be aware that involvement in this area can help you if you really want to network and get heavily engaged so what we did end of uh, 2013 we brought in the ceo of the technology association of georgia Back around 2007, I went to a meeting in Colorado and there was a group forming called Techno, which is Technology Councils of North America. So if you look around the U.S. and Canada, Atlanta, Denver, Phoenix, Seattle, Northern Virginia, Pittsburgh, Boston, New York, Chicago, there are other groups like ours. And we basically all do the same thing. We're trying to build the technology sector in our area. We're trying to promote growth. We're trying to help facilitate education in colleges. So Techno was formed to kind of create more of a best practices. And not only that, Toronto, Alberta, Vancouver. So if you're looking for other groups in other areas in the U.S. or Canada that you want to get a contact with, we've got those. We can help you. But we also looked at the Technology Association of Georgia is probably the largest one out there. It's about two or three times our size. We're about 300 and some odd member companies, and we just started allowing employed individuals in last year, and we've had about 100 of those. TAG, or TA, Technology Association of Georgia, has allowed individuals and non-tech companies in for several years, and they're built around what they call societies. So our special interest groups kind of came up, and they ran for a while, and they disappeared. There's our permanent ongoing setups, and we've now adopted that model where we sat down at the end of 2013 and decided we're going to start building out, we call them forums, around technologies, industry verticals, functional roles within companies like HR, marketing, etc. Um, we, of course, being technology people, immediately came up with the first six and said we're going to keep cloud computing. That's more of your data centers, SaaS platform as a service <coughs> we're going to create internet of things business intelligence and big data cyber security we partnered with one of our members who was already running the surface mounted tech association on a design and manufacturing group and then uh, we have a health technology group that's launching we've got an hr group that's already been kind of formulated and percolating uh, I'd like to see us move more into retail, energy, finance, hospitality, logistics. Uh, we haven't been in those markets, but one of the things we changed in the 2014 reworking of our membership and our engagement model was, you know, we used to be, 1997, I think I came to a tech luncheon when I worked for Velo. I was just getting into technology and I was on a waiting list for rubber chicken with about 400 people at a hotel up the street. And I was like, wow, what is going on here? Well, if you remember, and I don't know if anybody else has been through the startup process, but yeah, I had the options and we were going to IPO and we we're watching Squawk Box at lunch. And obviously, I'm still here. Uh, but nevertheless, the experience was, at that time, wealth advisors, insurance folks, everybody wanted to be with the tech people because this whole new economy was coming out. So we created a rule that said 80% of our companies have to be technology producing companies. And the other 20% could be providers to that, so legal or talent and staffing or investing. But they had to be focused on tech because otherwise the whole organization would get overrun. Well, we rolled along with that model and our priority, our pillars for 14 years. And then all of a sudden we looked up the end of 2013 and said, who's not a technology company? Is there anybody out there now? It's not 1994 anymore, it's 2014. And I don't know a company out there that 
and runs without a technology platform, so why don't we open this up? And we don't need to do, you know, if the company won't join, the individuals can join, we're going to let everybody in. And we're going to go out and reach out to those areas that we haven't necessarily been in before. So you'll see more of those, and you can participate in that in that growth of both the organization. If you've got a specialty in one of these other areas, like a retail or a finance or an energy, we're looking to add new forms every year. Uh, we started with technology because I think we're technologists, but I think as we go on, you're gonna see more growth in those other areas. And as soon as we get a committed group of volunteers that's ready to work on it, and we can get a budget and a sponsor, we can launch these, there's a process to do it. And then and eventually all of the forum leaders will be board members of the organization. So that'll help to drive everything at the same same direction. So that's what's going on now. Oh, by the way, Metroplex Technology Business Council. Ten syllables. MTBC. Or NCBT or N something. Or then there's Pamela Tomasello who says by the time I get done saying I'm Pamela Tomasello with the Metroplex Technology Business Council. Play. <laughs> <laughs> so in one of the funniest board meetings ever, we hired the uh, chief branding guy from Texas Instruments and Pam Watkins who runs one of the big agencies in town to help us find a new name. And they came back and said, you know what? Pam said, I've never seen a company say I have too much money for rebranding and you guys are a nonprofit. Oh, by the way, you've got a brand that everybody knows and they associate it with the biggest event of the year and you own the domains. And so Kent Novak, who was our chairman, had said his only demand on this name change was less syllables. <laughs> we cut it by 70%. So Tech Titans just was changed in uh, what, August of last year, I think? Yeah. So our name is new, our model is new, our pricing is new. There's a there's now only six price points instead of providers and non-providers and da 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 da. Uh, but it's a great time to be part of the group. A lot of good stuff going on. We even changed our mission statement. We used to say we were supporting the technology companies in North Texas. We serve and champion the technology community. We still keep innovation and advocacy the talent development. Those things haven't gone away. What we're doing though, through the forums, and I find this all the time, and does anybody else feel like, I've got cell phone, I've got email, I've got four emails. Uh, I'm more hyper-connected now than I've ever been, and I'm more time-constrained now than I've ever been. So if the tech industry luncheon this month is right in my wheelhouse and I've got time, I'm gonna go. But if it's not, I might not. And that's where the forums come in. On the other hand, like I'm running our cybersecurity group. And if I'm in the cyberspace, and these groups, the forums put on quarterly meetings, some of them do more than that. I've actually got a meeting coming up at the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank on uh, email business compromise at banks. You've been seeing the stories about banks transferring money where the hackers have been in an average of 275 days. They've been watching the network from inside. Wow. Wait till the appropriate signee is not in the office and say, oh, send me three million over to this bank in Indonesia. And off it goes. Um, mobile banking security, the chips and credit cards program. I think most of us have our chips, but you can't use them because the end points aren't there. But this is where you get more specific type. We can drill down a little deeper. It's a smaller group. It's 40 to 75 people. It's less expensive because we don't need a hotel ballroom. Uh, so this is what we're doing with the forums. We're going to create, think about this, 20 to 30 of these forums doing four events each a year. So now you've got a menu of 60 to 80 different things you can go to. And you can pick and choose the ones that are most relevant to what you do. So that's where we're going. Um, and how can we uh, help you do business on the way? Uh, Wayne Rampey is my vice chair of member services, who's a founding member of the InSource Group at Jack and Placement. And he said, you know, when I got on the board at Tech Titans, I had dinner with the chief economist at IBM who was going to speak at the tech industry lunch the next day. He goes, I never would have met that guy if I was just, you know, Wayne at InSource. He said, but, you know, if you come in and your objective is, hi, I'm Wayne, can I have some of your money?
money, please. Good luck. But if you come in here and you actually get engaged and you get involved, and this is where we're going to go next, get on one of the teams or committees that are running these things because the events are a great place to get seen and pass out a lot of business cards. But the upside of this time constraint issue is that warm referrals are now more valuable than ever. We've been talking about this with Mark and I, and I do this all the time, so does family. You know, we just try and create business between other Tech Titans members. And frankly, I used to be able to respond to unsolicited cold calls for services with a you know, respond email of thanks, not interested. Delete, 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 delete. I don't have time for any of that anymore. On the flip side, I had a CIO in transition say, look, I'm looking at this company and I know them. He said, would you mind pinging them? He said, believe it or not, even being in a, in a, in a, a non-partisan position like me, I can say, hey, you ought to talk to this guy. He said, that carries as much weight as me trying to go in on my own or more. So get engaged, and that's where you really get involved. Come to the events. Wayne also was the genius that said, I work with a company that does executive placement. I buy a table of eight. I bring four of my best clients and three of my best prospects, and I sit them in between each other, and I let my clients tell my prospects how great I am. Awesome. Great idea. <laughs> Get on the committee, guest writer, uh, Amy, we've got a weekly newsletter, um, submit to Titans Awards. Amy mentioned it before, tell the other people in your office about who we are and what we do, because they're already a member. They may not know it, but if we put them in the database, they can participate as well. Pamela, would you grab those folders from the